What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the show. So today I want to talk about Social Security. I want to talk about the five potential changes that we could see to Social Security in the next two years. So that's what we're going to focus on in this video. But first off, if you guys can do me a favor, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that little bell notification, and then click all. By clicking all, you'll get notified anytime we post a video. We do daily videos here. So by clicking the bell notification and clicking all, you should be getting updated every day. Okay, so before we get started, I have a call to action for you guys. I need you guys to help me out when it comes to the views on, on my videos. So about a week and a half ago, and this happened, this was across the board when it came to YouTube. There were a lot of different uh, YouTubers that were complaining about this same issue. Uh, basically what happened is we posted a video, I posted a video, and I noticed that the views, instead of going up, they were actually decreasing. And so it was interesting to me because it decreased all the way down. It was at about 2,000 views, and then it decreased all the way down to like 200 views. And it was over over about a couple of hours that this happened. And so YouTube initially said that there was nothing wrong. And then they came out and said, yes, there was a, a glitch in the system. But ever since then, I'm looking at my videos and there, there's been a problem when it comes to the views. I don't know what's going on there. So uh, like I always tell you guys, when it comes to subscribing to the channel, when you hit that little bell notification, you should be getting those notifications. Let me know in the comments below if you are getting those notifications. I post videos every day, so you should be getting a notification every day. Also, please share my video. So if you guys see something that you think that your family or friends could benefit from, share this video with them. And hopefully I'll be able to get back into the YouTube algorithm because ever since this situation happened, I've noticed that the views have really dropped off. So if you guys can do that for me, I really appreciate it. So share the video. And if you don't know how to share video, let me, let me uh, show you here really quickly how you can uh, share a video. So if you look down here where my cursor is, it says share. If you click on share, it's gonna open this up and you have different options here. You can share it to Facebook, you can share it to Twitter. Uh, you can also, you should be able to send an email. You can send an email here and then you can click copy. Now, if you click copy, let's say you wanna send it to a friend, you wanna send them an email and you don't have your email integrated into your computer system. So I don't wanna get into too technical, but basically uh, what you can do is just click copy here and it's gonna copy this link. And then you just open up an email like you regularly would open up an email and then you can just paste this into the email and, and it, will, uh, it will have that link there so that you can just click on the link. And you can also create a post on YouTube. So anyone who has a YouTube profile has a YouTube account. So basically you can uh, create videos and all that, but you can also share a video just by clicking create post and then you'll be able to send that YouTube video that way. So I'm just showing you guys some different options here. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on when it comes to YouTube because I've seen a drastic drop in views in the last week and a half, and that was right after this situation happened. I've talked to some of my, my friends that, that have YouTube channels as well, and they're also seeing some, some, some changes when it comes to the views. And so if you guys can do me that favor, I appreciate it. Like I said, make sure you subscribe, make sure that bell notification is, is clicked on, and then share my videos. If you, if you see something, I'm putting out a lot of videos now that, that deal with different benefits for, for people all over the US. So share those videos. If you know someone in a, in a certain area, I'll be doing a video later today where I'll be talking about some different resources in, in a couple more states. If you see, if you know, if you have friends in that state, Share that video with them so they'll have that information. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with today's video. So we're gonna be focusing on the changes that we could see to Social Security in the next two years. Now I say the next two years because we have the new Congress in, so the House has changed, the House is being run by Republicans, Democrats are controlling the Senate, and Democrats are controlling the White House. Both political parties are reluctant to do anything when it comes to Social Security because they know that you have 70 million people out there that are on Social Security so if you make the wrong decision, it could affect your your party. It could affect your your reelection, and so that's why they're very they're not moving very fast when it comes to Social Security. So what will need to happen is you're going to need to see something bipartisan. That that's just the reality. And a bipartisan bill, at least both parties can say, you know what, we came together, we negotiated, and we and we put out this this new program for Social Security. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't work 
then now one party can't be the blame for it not working. And so that's when we're looking at it, I think that's the, the best option for both parties to come together and come to some resolution when it comes to social security. So what could we potentially see as far as changes to social security? So the first thing, and I've, I've talked about this in, in a variety of different videos, but when it comes to social security, the first thing, and you have Democrats that are really pushing this more than Republicans, is to go after the, the wealthy, okay? And so increased taxes on the wealthy is one thing that we've been hearing about. And the way that they can do this, and I pull this information off the Motley Fool website, it says uh, one, one solution is to start taxing income above 400,000 per year for social security purposes. Currently, only income up to $160,200 per year is subject to social security taxes. Okay, so let's stop here and let's talk a little bit about what that means. So anyone making $160,200 or less will be taxed. They'll, they'll be paying into the payroll tax, the FICA tax. Now, what they want to do is they want to have a gap. So from people making 160,000 to 160,200 to 400,000, they don't have to pay into the payroll tax. However, if you're making 400,000 or more, you'll have to pay into the payroll tax. Now why 400,000? Why, why, why is that number important? That number is important because President Biden made a pledge when he was running for president that he would not raise taxes on anyone making 400,000 or less. And so that's the reason why they're talking 400,000. Now, Senator Bernie Sanders came up with the plan and he wanted to expand social security, offer the $2,400 uh, increase per year or $200 per month. And so in Senator Bernie Sanders plan, he drops it down to 250,000 or more. And so there would be a gap between 160,200 and 250,000. That gap, you wouldn't have to pay into the payroll tax, but if you made anything over 250,000, you'd have to start paying into the payroll tax again. And so that's what they're talking about here when it comes to the 160,000 to 400,000, that little gap, you don't have to pay into the payroll tax, but anything over 400,000, you would have to pay into the payroll tax. Okay, wealthy workers paying more in taxes will increase the program's income and provide more cash that can be paid out in benefits once the trust funds are depleted. Okay, so the focus here is the trust funds. The trust funds will run out of money by 2034, 2035. That's what the economists are saying at this point. And so what that means is they need to reform Social Security by 2034, 2035. If they do not do that, you're going to see a reduction of about 23%. So you'll still receive Social Security, but you'll see that reduction. And so that's what they're trying to avoid here. And one way that they've been talking about is taxing the rich basically is, is what they're saying. And so that's the first option. Democrats are really pushing for this. However, Republicans are showing reluctancy to do this. So we're probably not gonna see this in the next two years. Okay, the next option, the next option is raising the retirement age, the full retirement age. The current full retirement age is between 66 or 67, depending on when you were born. What they wanna do is they want to raise that, okay? So they wanna raise it to 68, to 69 or 70. We don't know the exact age because they haven't really put that forward. Republicans are really pushing this. Democrats, they're not really talking too much about this. This could be a realistic option because they did it back in 1983. They raised the retirement age from 65 to 66 or 67. And so this is something that we could see again. Uh, if Democrats, if they can get enough Democrats on board to wanna move forward with raising the age uh, for retirement, then we could potentially see that. Now, if they raise the age of retirement, that is just going to address the trust fund. It's not going to be any type of expansion to Social Security. So you have Democrats that want to expand Social Security. Republicans aren't really talking about an expansion to Social Security. And when I'm talking about expansion to Social Security, I'm talking about a raise for Social Security, like a $200 raise for Social Security every month. So Republicans aren't really talking about that. Democrats are talking about expanding Social Security. So we'll have to see what they do. But when it comes to raising the full retirement age, that is going to address the trust fund and the trust fund only. And it would need to be phased in. So this is not something that would happen tomorrow. So they would have to actually start very early on in the process in order to phase this in. So let's say you're 54 or younger right now, you could be in a situation where your full retirement age would move up to 68 or 69 or 70. And so that's something that wouldn't happen immediately. It wouldn't affect those people who are currently receiving social security, but it would affect people 
down the road, maybe 10 years down the road. So that would be the second option. Now let's go on to the third option. So the third option here is to increase the payroll tax. Now we've talked about this and, and let's go back to Motley Fool here and, and uh, read this. Another potential way to increase social security funding is to increase the payroll tax itself from 6.2% to 6.5%. Okay, let's talk a little bit about what that means. So currently, if you're working, you're paying 6.2% FICA tax, and that goes straight to Social Security. They want to increase that to 6.5. If you increase it to 6.5%, that will address the trust fund, and it might have some money left over to address the raise for Social Security, to address expanding Social Security. So that's one option. That's something that Democrats are really for this. Republicans, not so much. Republicans don't want to raise taxes at all, ever. But we do have some Democrats that do want to make a just a small incremental increase. We're not talking about a large amount. And so if you're working right now, you're paying more into the Social Security program. And then when you retire, you don't have to worry about the retirement age moving up to 68 or 69 or 70. You would be able to still get your full retirement at 67. You wouldn't have to be pushed up. And I think most people, if you're looking at the situation and you want to go from 6.2% to 6.5% and you're, you fall into that category, let's say you're 54 years old or younger, and you're thinking, well, the other option would be to raise the full retirement age. I think most people would say, you know what? Just increase a FICA just a little bit. I'm fine with that if I can still retire at 67. And so that that's going to be a real option, I think. And this is something that if you can get some Republicans on board, it's hard when it comes to raising taxes because Republicans, anytime you talk about raising taxes, they automatically say no. And so if, they, if you can get some Republicans on board and move forward through the House and Senate and get it to the president, this has a potential of getting signed. And like I said earlier, when it comes to Social Security, both sides, they don't really want to do anything because if it doesn't work, then they're to blame. And you have 70 million people that are going to be looking at them saying, why did you guys do this to Social Security and vote them out of office? So that's the main reason why uh, we're not seeing real movement when it comes to Social Security. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the fourth option here. And this is, again, from Motley Fool. It says, finally, the fourth potential solution is to reduce benefits from the top 20% of earners. It's unclear exactly how much high earners benefits would be reduced, but they would still receive larger payments than lower earners. The gap would just be smaller. And so basically they would kind of balance it out. So if you're a high earner, you would receive a little bit less in your social security benefits, but then the people at the bottom would receive a little bit more. So you're just kind of balancing it out. And I guess the way that they're looking at this is the higher earners, they don't really rely on social security at the same level that the lower earners rely on social security. So this could be an option if you kind of just balance it out that way. Not very popular among Democrats or Republicans. I think Democrats would be more for this but when it comes down to it, this is this is probably not we're not going to see this. We, we, we haven't heard too much about them doing this. I think the more logical solution would be to raise the FICA tax. That that would be the more logical, either that or the full retirement age. And so that would be the fourth option. Now, the fifth option, the fifth option is to have a stabilizer. So the FICA tax that we we're talking about, raising the FICA tax, have that in play, but with the stabilizer. So what that would mean is, let's say it's at 6.2% right now, and I didn't explain exactly. So 6.2%, if you're working, you're paying the 6.2%, and your employer is also paying a 6.2%, and that goes to Social Security. And so I didn't make that clear. The employers also, they're, they're backing it. So they're 6.2% they're from the employer, 6.2% from you. That's what goes to the Social Security Administration. So what they would do is they would have a stabilizer in place. And so if Social Security is not collecting enough revenue, the stabilizers would kick in and that 6.2% would go up to 6.5% and that would help pay Social Security. That's the way that that would work. If we have a good economy and we have a strong workforce, it won't be needed. But if we have a, a poor economy and our workforce starts to dwindle, that's when the stabilizer would kick in. And so this would incentivize politicians to make sure that our economy is strong. Now, I think this is good for two reasons. One, it's not instant. And so you can raise taxes or have the stabilizer in place to raise taxes, but it's not going to affect people right away. And you might go two years, even five years down the road before this actually has to play a role. And so I think that's good. The second reason, is this will incentivize politicians to have a good economy, 
to focus on a good economy because you have some politicians out there right now that want a poor economy. They want our economy to do bad because they have a political advantage if it does. And that's what that's the big problem in our two party system is that you have some politicians that are rooting against the government. They're rooting against the U.S. They want us to do poorly. They want people to suffer because then they have that political advantage and they can say, hey, look, I'm over here. You can vote for me because this politician couldn't handle the business. And look at look at the disaster that we're looking at. I mean, all you need to do is get on any any social media, Twitter, and you'll just see politicians lashing out against each other. And, and that's not beneficial for us. It hurts us, but it helps their cause because they can get reelected. They can keep their jobs. They can keep their political power. And that's what they're, they're focused on. And so by having this stabilizer, it will say, okay, look, you guys all voted for this, both Democrats and Republicans. This is one of those bills that would have to be bipartisan. You guys both voted for this. And so if you keep our economy strong and you keep our workforce strong, we don't have to worry about the stabilizer at all. But if our economy starts to drop, that's when that stabilizer will come into place. And so it will incentivize politicians to do the right thing and try to keep a strong economy. And so those are the five realistic options that we're looking at right now. I think the strongest one would be the FICA tax, raising the FICA tax or doing the stabilizer. I think the stabilizer is actually the best option because nothing will happen immediately. Um, but uh, the other options that are out there, we, we are still hearing a lot of talk about raising the full retirement age. But when it comes to a solution, a real solution, solid solution, I think it's a FICA tax. They're going to need to adjust that. And then the hope is they'll have a little bit left over so they could provide some type of an expansion to Social Security, some type of a raise for Social Security. So I want to know what you guys think about these options. So let me know down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more. And remember, share this video with others if you think they can benefit from it. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.